This is a highly popular and reliable FlashForge Adventurer 4 Pro. And this is FlashForge's newest flagship printer, the FlashForge Adventurer 5M Pro. Today we're going to be putting these head to head and comparing the differences to find out whether it's worth upgrading to the Adventurer 5M Pro or sticking with the much loved Adventurer 4 Pro. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get comparing. Alright, so there's quite a few differences between these printers to cover. So as usual in our comparison videos, to make it easier for you guys, we've segmented it into four categories. Size, hardware, filament, and printer interface. The first thing that you'll notice is that the Adventurer 5M Pro's box is significantly smaller than the Adventurer 4 Pro's. In fact, the 5M Pro's box is almost identical to the Adventurer 3. The Adventurer 4 Pro box comes in at 585 by 570 by 630 millimeters, and the Adventurer 5M Pro box comes in at 480 by 460 by 530 millimeters. That's 100 millimeters smaller on each dimension. Now that the printers are out of the box, you get a better idea of the size difference. And as you can see here, the Adventurer 5M Pro is indeed smaller. The Adventurer 4 Pro comes in at 500 by 470 by 540 millimeters. And the Adventurer 5M Pro comes in at 380 by 400 by 450 millimeters. The general rule of thumb with 3D printers is a bigger printer means a bigger build size. However, as you'll see in the next image, the Adventurer 4 Pro has only a slightly bigger build size. The Adventurer 4 Pro has a max build volume of 220 by 200 by 250 millimeters, and the Adventurer 5M Pro has a slightly smaller max build volume of 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters. Both the Adventurer 4 Pro and Adventurer 5M Pro come with a double-sided build plate. The 4 Pro has a smooth PEI coating on one side and uncoated steel on the other. With the Adventurer 5M Pro, Flashforge has opted for a textured PEI coating on both sides of the plate. The design structure has been upgraded with the 5M Pro, opting for a Core XY structure instead of the widely popular Cartesian design. According to FlashForge, this Core XY design allows the 5M Pro to print at speeds of 300mm per second by default and with a max travel speed of 600mm per second. Another upgrade FlashForge has made is the extruder. The Adventurer 4 Pro uses a Bowden style extruder, whereas the Adventurer 5M Pro has a direct drive extruder. This upgrade should help push the filament through the head quicker while also reducing extrusion related issues. The 5M Pro's extruder head still has the same number of fans as the 4 Pro, however, the head now has a removable faceplate for easy access to the nozzle, making unclogging nozzles and fixing extruder issues a lot easier. FlashForge has also added a cable chain or drag chain to the 5M Pro and have changed the extruder head cable from a flat cable to a more stronger and robust cable, which is some nice quality of life upgrades. There is also no more Teflon tube joint, so you will no longer have the issue of the guide tube coming loose or being stuck in the head. Nice job, FlashForge. The Adventurer 4 Pro brought two new nozzles to the table. A 240 degree high speed 0.4 mm nozzle and a 265 degree hardened 0.6 mm nozzle, bringing the total amount of nozzles compatible with the Adventurer 4 Pro to a whopping six which in my opinion is a little overwhelming and frustrating as you had to constantly change nozzles due to both temperature and diameter. With the release of the 5M Pro, FlashForge has released four new nozzles. These nozzles come in the following diameters, 0.4mm and 0.6mm, which are included with the 5M Pro, as well as a 0.25mm and 0.8mm, which can be purchased separately. All these nozzles are 280 degree nozzles with both the 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles being hardened. 
This reduces the compatible nozzle count by two and means that you will only be swapping your nozzle based on one factor, diameter. Having an increased max temperature of 280 degrees also makes this printer compatible with a wider range of engineering filaments, which we will mention later in the video. The last main difference in hardware is the spool holder, which has now been relocated to the back of the machine instead of being built into the side like on the Adventure 4 Pro. Now this does reduce the form factor of the machine significantly, however it can be a bit of a pain having to reach over the back of the machine to load and change filament. Luckily some of the Flashforge community have already created side mounted spool holders that can be 3D printed and added onto the printer. Out of the box, the Adventurer 4 Pro comes with a 1kg spool of high-speed PLA. The Adventurer 5M Pro, on the other hand, only comes with a 250g spool of high-speed PLA, which is a little disappointing, however, this may have helped them reduce the price of this new printer. The Adventurer 4 Pro, with its highest temperature nozzle being 265 degrees, can print the following filaments. PLA, ABS, PC, PETG, PLACF and PETGCF. It can also print TPU and ASA, however Flashprint does not currently have profiles for them. The Adventure 5M Pro with its new range of 280 degree nozzles can print the following filaments. PLA, ABS, PC, PETG, PLACF, PETGCF, TPU, ASA, ASACF and PA. The whole printer UI has had a revamp with the first main difference being that the categories are now small icons on a sidebar instead of large icons in the middle of the screen. Now there may be a new UI, however, most of the printer's functions can still be found under the same main categories. The first category on both printers is the build category, where you can choose to print preloaded files or print files from an installed USB. The second category on the Adventure 4 Pro is the Prepare category, where you can preheat both the print bed and extruder head, as well as load and unload filament. On the Adventure 5M Pro, this category has been changed to just filament, and this is where you can load and unload filament. There is no preheat function on the Adventure 5M Pro. The third category on both printers is the settings category. On the Adventure 4 Pro, this category is where you can move and home your printer, connect your printer to the internet, factory reset your printer, turn on and off filament runout detection and sound, as well as access the built-in camera to toggle on images and time lapses. On the Adventure 5M Pro, this category is where you can move and home your printer, connect your printer to the internet, level and perform a vibration compensation, turn on and off filters, as well as access the built-in camera to toggle on images and time lapses. The last category on the Adventure 4 Pro is the Maintain category, and is where you can upgrade your printer's firmware, download logs, level and adjust the Z offset, as well as change extruders and access a troubleshooting guide. The last category on the Adventure 5M Pro is the Information category, and is where you can upgrade your printer's firmware, download logs, factory reset your printer, turn on or off sound, filament detection and auto shutdown, as well as access maintenance guides and after sales support.
After comparing these two printers, I can confidently say that the Adventure 5M Pro is a significant upgrade from the Adventure 4 Pro. It is very easy to set up, prints 100 millimeters per second faster by default, produces exceptional quality prints, and is compatible with other slices such as Orca Slicer, which brings you more options to refine your printed models, including tree supports, which are super easy to remove, and seam settings, making the seam almost, if not invisible. Flashforge has done a fantastic job with this printer, and in my opinion, they have made a highly competitive printer that rivals even the Bamboo Lab range of 3D printers. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this video helpful, if you did don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.